I'm here with Jennifer Farr Davis. She's uh, written a book, her husband's written a book about her adventures on the Appalachian Trail, and she's the overall record holder right. for the uh, record setter for the Appalachian Trail. And um, Jennifer, I should just say, I I'm a lifelong student of ob overcoming obstacles and achieving success. And hiking the Appalachian Trail, you've overcome your share of obstacles, and you've overcome uh, all of that to, to achieve the record. But before we get into all of that, what drew you to the Appalachian Trail? How did you start? Well, I was lucky to grow up in the mountains of western North Carolina, and I'd heard about the trail. And really, after college, I wanted an adventure, but I also needed some time to figure things out. I had always been accountable to my teachers, my parents, my coaches, and I needed to figure out what it was I was good at who I was, and I knew I needed an adventure to do that. So I set out on the Appalachian Trail without any experience, with very little knowledge, and I made almost every mistake in the book. But I was stubborn and learned how to be flexible and change the things I was doing wrong, so at the end I was really a different person than the girl who had started the trail. Hmm. Well, well t tell us about some of those obstacles. What, what were they? Unbelievable. I mean, I had such a unique experience my first time on the AT. I was struck by lightning. I heard that. I was thinking, you know, you'd be <laughs> charred or something. I know. <laughs> the blonde streak in my hair. No. Uh, I was caught in a snowstorm where my eye froze shut. I had to deal with the trail community, which overall is the best community I had ever been a part of, but there were lots of young men around my age who wanted to hike with me and I didn't want to hike with them. <laughs> and one time this guy followed me for about seven days and I didn't know how to get rid of him and I didn't want to be mean, but the trail taught me to be real direct. So that was a good life lesson. And then the hardest thing I dealt with was uh, when I was in New Jersey, I crossed a mountaintop where there was a road leading up from the nearby town and I got there and found the body of someone who had just committed suicide. Oh, that's so awful. I was traumatized but the trail community really came around me and supported me. And you were the one who found I was the one who found the body. But Ooh. because of those relationships I had built I still felt safe and I wanted to continue. So I did, and the trail never got easier. I got 140 bug bites my first day in Massachusetts. You counted them. Yes, twice. And New Hampshire and Maine are burly, but it was one of the best experiences of my life, and I'm so glad I didn't give up. Well, it's interesting in obstacles. I, I noticed you never mentioned animals as an obstacle. And in your book, you, you write, really, that you're, you're a visitor in their world. Yeah. And so t tell us, though, there have to be some interesting um, examples of things that have happened. I remember the rattlesnake snoring mm -hmm. in the book. What, what, what example kind of strikes you as one to share? You know, well, my first hike, I didn't see that much wildlife because I was starting after the sun came up and I was stopping in the evening and the animals really come out at dawn and dusk. So I was scared of bears and snakes, but I never saw a bear my first trip. And I started to see snakes and I just learned they don't want anything to do with me. They just want to be left alone. So I began to get over my fear, and throughout more hiking and more adventures, I really began to embrace seeing the animals. I mean, that's one of the coolest parts of the trail. And by doing the record and waking up so early and hiking so late and quietly moving through the woods at dawn and dusk, I was only out on the trail 46 days this past summer, and I saw 36 black bears and 12 moose and lots of snakes and snakes. You're really into counting everything. Uh, well, yeah. Number of bug bites, I number do. of bears. But it's not about the numbers. It's something I always say. It's never about how far you go or how fast you go. It's always what you take from the experience. Good quote. Right. Well, how, how about this? You, you, all these obstacles, mm -hmm. and you're talking about you know physical obstacles, but there's mental obstacles as well. Uh, and th there were so many people who were saying to you, "You can't do it. That's mm -hmm, impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't. Not the way you want to do it. You right. can't do it. Woman can't do it." Right. How did you overcome the mental obstacles to do uh, it? It became really important leading up to the record that I consciously tuned out the negative voices because. If I went on a computer to a hiking forum, it was mostly criticism. It was mostly negative voices, people telling me, I couldn't do it. A hiker hasn't held this record in 30 years. A woman has never held this record. But I knew in my heart I had a chance. My husband believed in me. And I didn't want to be intimidated by the fear of failure. So instead of worrying about what if, 
I, instead, I thought, worst case scenario, I'm going to be on a trail that I love with the man that I love doing something I love. And I don't see what's so bad about that. And look what happened. And look what happened. E easy. It's just 46. It is. Yeah. Piece of cake, right? <laughs> well, you also took an unconventional route, right? Yes, um, yes. You know, one of the things I noted was, um, though some people wouldn't call it backwards, some people mm -hmm. would say you took a, a, a trail a technique from north to south right. when most people go south to right. north. And um, you can tell I spent some time on the, the trail er, early life of Boy Scouts and those kind yeah. of things. But you, you went the opposite way. Yeah. What, what made you do that? And you also had a different hiking methodology. You didn't yeah. run to beat right. the record. You had a different. So you, you, you accomplished right. your goal, but very differently. Oh, well, what led you to those decisions? You know, and some people really think that hiking north to south means you're going downhill. And I promise you, <laughs> it is not downhill that direction. Um, but you do get through Maine and New Hampshire in the beginning. And they're the most difficult two states based off of terrain. So you get that behind you. And then I knew because I was receiving support along the way, my husband was meeting me at roadsides and we needed food and company and supplies. The further south I got, the more support I would receive because I grew up in North Carolina, I have family in Tennessee, I lived in Virginia. And so feeling like I had basically the home court advantage and the southern half was really important. And then also starting up north on the toughest section in mid-June gave us the longest daylight hours for the hardest section of trail. So a lot of thought went into making that decision. Interesting. Well, one of the other themes in your book that, that you're very open about is faith. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like you found sort of faith mm -hmm. in the, in, on the trail, in the trail, with the trail. Mm -hmm. How? What? Tell us a little bit about that. How did faith play a role or did oh. the uh, trail play a role in your faith? Well, you know, the journey for me has always been physical, mental, but also spiritual. And you find when you're out on the trail, usually when something happens, you have a support network around you. And so you go to your friends or you go to your family and you tell them what happened. But when I was by myself on the trail, I always went straight to God, you know, and it was prayer. And a lot of times it was very casual prayer or it was a terrified prayer because I was in a <laughs> storm and I just needed to be rescued or kept safe. But that was where I took my thoughts and my request and my hopes. And so it became this very natural walking prayer. And there is this state of meditation that you can reach on the trail because you're doing a very meditative and repetitive movement. And you have so much time to think that eventually your mind gets to a place where it's still and at peace and you really feel like you can focus or think new thoughts that you really don't have the time or concentration to deal with in our hectic day-to-day -day society. So faith has been very important, and I feel like I grow in my faith and my relationship with God every time I go out on the trail. It did seem like a spiritual retreat sort of oh, pilgrimage. You saw it that way as well. It is. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an incredible record, and I'm sure it's not done, and you're <laughs> going to continue to be drawn back to the to trail yeah. multiple times mm -hmm. with your family. What, what's next for you? You've written a book. Your husband's written a yeah. book about it. You broke the record. What's well, next? Well, you hit it. Um, really on the head because the ultimate goal is to have a lifelong relationship with the trail. It's not to set records, but I really believe the trail will meet you at every phase of life. So we'd love to have kids and be able to experience the trail as a family. And then again, when we're older, and in the meantime, it's become very clear that this is my passion. I've tried to work other jobs. I've tried to do other things. And I keep going back to the trail because it's truly what I love. And I want to get other people out there. They don't have to set a record, they don't have to through hike, but just to be able to go outdoors and feel comfortable on a trail and in nature. They can sit on a rock for a lie care, but I want to give them that opportunity. So by telling stories, by guiding trips, and by speaking, hopefully I'm exposing and encouraging people to the outdoors. Well, it, it's certainly a great book. You can see the mental, physical, spiritual yeah. elements all coming into uh, the, the journey that you've had. And it's, it's quite a story, quite a life. Thanks. And it'll be interesting to see what's next I in know. the next <laughs> chapter for you. So thanks so much for sharing thanks. your story with I us. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank thanks you. a lot.